speaking about the law, uh, logically discussing the law, handling the law with excellence. You know, we're not forbidden from discussing the law. The law is good. It, it is, it, uh, the law is fulfilled for us by Christ Jesus. It is true that we are dead to the law, and it is true that, quote, whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, but we are not under the law, we are under grace. And Scripture does say, reckon yourself dead to the law and dead to sin. So, uh, my point being, we aren't forbidden from handling the law or discussing the law, oh no, but may we discuss it very graciously, and may we discuss it and and talk about it and handle it most truthfully with with the highest of excellence. Um, thy shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy strength and mind and and will. Uh, I can't even quote it almost, but and and love your neighbor as you love yourself. To discuss the law is not forbidden, but may we discuss the law, and, and of course it's always love is good, to love our neighbor, to love God is good, but but the thy shout part, which is inseparable, you know, the law, anyway, may we discuss the law most graciously, always most graciously, always with grace, to discuss the law recklessly, to proclaim the law without grace, is, is juvenile, it is obsolete, it is forgetful, it is hurtful, uh, to handle, to discuss the law with grace, in the light of grace. Uh, is to handle the law excellently. And so I was kind of reminding myself and perhaps you and perhaps anyone else who may hear this or any guardian angels that have me hang around um, that we are not forbidden from discussing the law and even though we're dead to it and uh, and whatever it says, it says to those who are under it the law is not annulled; it's just fulfilled, and and uh, and we are not forbidden. It's like, oh, we can just talk about. Oh, we can only talk about grace. We're commissioned to talk about grace. True, we are commissioned to talk about grace, but we also are are commissioned to talk graciously about the law at appropriate times and in good ways. We are not forbidden from handling the law with excellence. The Apostle Paul said this, he says, don't you know what the law says, you who insist on going back to it, or you who insist on keeping it, don't you know what it says? Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do all things that are written in the law to do them. Inseparable from the law, is that one precept that if you don't do it all it is a curse if you don't do all things that is an inseparable part of the law thy shalt not covet the thy shalt part is an inseparable part of the law to erase it off or clip it off is not an excellent handling of the law may we not bastardize the law uh, in order to keep it. May we not erase little parts of it in order to keep it. Uh, may we handle it in an unaltered, unwatered down state, but with grace, with grace that thank God he has met the righteous requirements of the law. Thank God we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Thank God, by his blood, by his crucifixion, we do not serve according to the law, but in a new way, a new spiritual way, a way in which good is done through us 
that the law could not do. Good gets done through us by the power of God through the Holy Spirit in a way that could never be done through the law or through the precepts of the law. The law is good, but it's only good for what it's good for. And no flesh is justified by the law. Uh, in Galatians chapter 3, it says, This only I want to know from you. Did you receive the Spirit by obedience to the law or by believing what you heard? Um, the Apostle Paul said in another spot, Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. Why do you submit yourselves to these elementary principles of this world as if they could help you in discipline of the flesh? Those who argue for such things, the, this persuasion does not come from God. And I wish that those who persuade you in this manner would go all the way and emasculate themselves. He seemed to be quite irritated at, at good-intentioned men who, who promoted the law as a way to be just, a way to be righteous, as guidelines or... or a way of service to God. He, he seemed to be quite indignant about these men who promoted the law instead of grace. Uh, in, in Acts chapter 15, there was a, a squabble arose. Uh, some of the believers in Christ Jesus who were of the sect of the Pharisees came and proclaimed, oh, we must compel the Gentiles to be circumcised. And after a, some substantial arguing and heated debate, uh, the Apostle Paul stood up and said, Hey, 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 uh, look, why should we compel Gentiles to do what we and our forefathers could not do? Keep the law. Why should we lay the law on them? Uh, just encourage them to... Uh, Avoid sexual immorality, that's good. And uh, uh, avoid drinking blood, that's good. The Apostle Paul did not reveal new law. The Apostle Paul, at that point in Acts, exhorted men graciously. It is gracious to exhort men to avoid sexual immorality, reckless sport fornication, or or reckless, uh, youthful, mindless, uh, yeah, sexual activity, heartbreaking activity, uh, dangerous sexual activity. It's good to exhort people to depart from iniquity. It's not legalistic. It's just plain a good directive. It's not a new commandment from God. It's not a thy shalt not be sexual immoral. No, it's not that. It is, it is good to depart from youthful folly. It is a, it is a directive, a gracious, gracious exhortation from God. All apostolic exhortations are exactly that, exhortations. There is not one that is a new commandment from God not even one. The law was fulfilled. There is no new law. There is grace. The law has been fulfilled. Thank, thank God. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for the new way, for him, for the spirit, you know. Good re covenant. Yeah, that's yes, right. Good Good religion is gracious, truthful, and above all, loving. Yes. Yes. And I was thinking about the verse when you were talking, therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in the sight, but uh, by the law is the knowledge of sin. We know the Bible says that uh, sin is transgression of the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. He, t he took away our sins. Uh, we're in a state of grace. It's something to remember because... It's not to remind people, so, oh, go out and live like, you know, like you said, in your youthful folly. It's to remind people because we're sinners. And some people are very hard on themselves. Um, some people can be very self-condemning. I think there's a scripture that says even if we condemn ourselves, God is greater than our hearts. He knows all things. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. Um, 
you know, thank God that our, our salvation isn't dependent on us. It's not something that derives from us. It's something God has called forth. He sustains and he, and he finishes the work that he, that he starts. Um, but yeah, it's very, a lot of, I think that's a problem in Christendom. A lot of people can be very self-condemning and not looking towards the cross, looking to themselves, maybe looking to other people um, so as a standard. Comforting. It's so comforting to be self-condemning in a, in a juvenile kind of way. It's comforting to feel bad over our youthful indiscretions. It's, it feels so just to embrace feeling like a worm over what has been paid for by Christ Jesus at a high cost, his blood. It feels justly required to feel like hell over missing the mark or over compulsive sin or, you know, guilt and embracing guilt in a juvenile kind of way can feel very just. But, but, um, may we may we understand that no suffering we do pays for sin uh-uh no suffering is is a penalty for sin Christ Jesus bore our penalty his suffering his suffering and his blood is the only thing and it is full enough to pay the full penalty of all our violations of law that we've ever done or may ever do, even though I'm dead to the law. Some might say, oh, Tom, you worked on the Sabbath. Or, Tom, you stole a paperclip. Or, Tom, you uh, were unloving to your neighbor when you hit him. Or, you know, whatever. Someone can judge me according to the law and say that I'm a violator, but whatever missing the mark that I have done or will ever do as I mature, as God matures me, whatever sin that I have done and will do is only paid for, all of it paid for by God himself. He is the provider of perfect righteousness. He paid the perfect righteous requirement of the law even down to the death penalty for one violation for one violation even one or ten million like the chief of sinners himself who was he again the Apostle Paul considered himself the chief of sinners even though he excelled above all his peers in compliance and obedience to the law the law is not of faith, but the just shall live by faith. Uh, uh, anyway, I forgot my main point to wrap it up. But and let me whatever is not of faith is sin, according to the Bible. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you know, to miss the mark, uh, which I have heard one of of one definition. One definition of sin might be this: any violation of the holy law of God the 613 precepts and laws and edicts or, or ordinances, any violation of that, the holy law of God is sin. But I've heard another definition of sin, which is missing the mark. Or I've heard another definition, which is anything that is not of faith is missing the mark, is sin. Uh, anyway, uh, my point, I guess, might be that uh, all sin, whether it's missing the mark or litter or uh, a, a mild unkindness or calling a brother a fool or whatever sin, whatever missing the mark that we or me or any individual does, the only payment that will work, guilt won't work, beating ourselves up, pays for nothing. The only sufficient payment, and it is sufficient, is his crucifixion and his blood and it is finished. We are forgiven eternally. We are, have been given his righteousness, thank God. Uh, we have been given his purity that we need. 
that we cannot be with God without absolute pure righteousness. It says, your righteousness must exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. You know, uh, the righteousness, the pseudo-righteousness born of the law ain't cutting it. And, and any guilt or self-punishment that we do pays for nothing, covers nothing. And in some ways, it is in some ways profane profane to cut ourselves, to beat ourselves, to bloody our knees as if punishment, as if that is is paying for our immaturity or for our uh, compulsive behavior, youthful behavior. That pays for nothing. And it is in some ways not, not seeing the sufficiency of the blood of Christ. Uh, I've heard that guilt is an important part of some religious mindsets, that embracing guilt, uh, perhaps in Roman Catholicism or something, seems to be part of the cycle of, you know, one will compulsively do something and then feel terrible about it and beat oneself up over it and then get another hit of forgiveness and then go out and do it again and then go to your knees and beat yourself and get forgiveness and go out and do it again over and over and over. Uh, to me, it seems more truthful and gracious to esteem the blood of Christ as sufficient. And, and truly, if it is sufficient, it is most... Most of it's more. I know, truly, truly. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's very important to, to teach, like you said back a little earlier, Paul said, I wanted to know nothing for you except Christ and Him crucified. It's important to tell that basic part of the message because if it's left out, I think the love of God's left out. And if the love of God's left out, and the Bible says, uh, you know, it's the love of God that leads to repentance, not the fear of God or the condemnation. Um, yes. It, yeah. If, if any goodness comes out of anything, it's going to be understanding the, the gospel message and the grace of God uh, for condemned criminals. To know they've been pardoned and they're forever um, unconditionally loved by, the, by their God. And like you said, I think if you leave it out, uh, like the stuff you were saying, I mean, it's, it's going to come home to people and they're going to be very even a Christian believer, they're going to be condemning of themselves. They're going to be like, "Did I, you know, I got to get to church this Sunday and Wednesday night, and I got to, you know, make sure I read and pray, and I got to go give do my fasting and my tithing, and it, and it's all an attempt to somehow please God and not feel guilty when um, the love of God is that He is pardon you, He forgives you. Um, this is kind of what I understood as a child when I first believed and then somehow along yeah. the way it got muddied <laughs> you yes. know when you first believe you have this joy that the Lord gives you who uh, deceived you who I marvel that you are so quickly pulled away from the grace of God the yeah. Apostle Paul you know that's how that's I right. feel too that when I was just a little scrub a young man I heard the good news and believed that oh my gosh he's paid for my sin and then and then sophistication set in you know and then good works oh God you know mindsets of good works to establish righteousness oh that purity of believing God the way a little child believes you know uh, Christ Jesus said to enter the kingdom you must believe as a little child uh, you know to believe that his that he died that he was crucified that he rose from the dead for sin, for my sin, to believe that, that that's enough, you know, he did it, and I am forgiven, uh, that seems, it's not, it might be childlike, but it is far from childish, it, it might be simple, but it is far from simplistic, uh, it is the truth, we are forgiven, and it is by one act of righteousness that many are made perfect. His act, he did it. It is finished. Thank God. 
blessed are you little ones for you have overcome the evil one you know in Christ Jesus we are overcomers it yeah. is it is finished yes uh, yeah. truth I beg to dismiss myself for 60 seconds to go to the royal washroom for temporary relief uh, I plan to return in 60 seconds excuse me sir. Okay. yeah that's cool uh <laughs> I have you on the timer. <laughs> of course, we're talking about the grace of God in here. If anybody wants to come in and share the grace of God, um, what God's done for you, your particular perspective on the grace of God. You're more than welcome to come in. Um, see, we got brother, brother St. Tommy in here this morning. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the verse that God has chosen the foolish things of the world to, to bring the simple to wise. <laughs> Um, that's the truth. God has chosen us. If you look, that's what the Bible says. If you see your calling, brother, and look that not many wise, not many noble, not many um, mighty, according to the flesh, were called, but God has chosen the weak things of the world. And definitely can say that in myself. I take absolutely no confidence in my flesh, and um, and, I, and I take no confidence in any success I have in life. That's for sure. I, all my faith and hope is in the Lord. And. Uh, Giving a little speech over here, Tommy. <laughs> Please continue. Um, <coughs> but yeah, I know. Uh, as something you said, it really had me thinking, and then I went <laughs> on my little speech there, and I forgot what it was. That's okay. Yeah, the grace of God easily forgotten. It's something that um, you have to remind yourself of daily. Your positional standing in Christ, not what you would see in the physical reality. Um, you got to walk by faith, not by sight. According to the Bible, you have to look, um, have faith in what Christ did. Um, a lot of believers, I think, are under the condemnation. Kind of like you were talking about, the, you know, that cursed is everyone who continues in the law. I think a lot of believers have that sort of mindset. And it's just like the other verse you said that um, Paul said. Um, I'm surprised that you've been bewitched to another gospel, which is not another gospel. Um, you know, and that's it brings a condemnation with it and, and rightfully so if you're in a mindset and you're condemning yourself and <laughs> it, it is it is there for a reason it's there to bring you more to the grace of God and you can be there for years if you want if you want to torture and have a guilt trip and feel bad about you know who you are as a person and your failings before God that you can ride that train until you're until you're miserable uh, or you start you know, fully putting your trust in the, the Lord and Savior you believe in, just like you did when you first were a child. I know that's what we were talking about. I, um, it, when I, and it's perplexing, too, because when you first believe, I, you get this joy, at least I did. I remember specifically the, you know, very spiritual feeling the night I was reading my Bible and felt like, uh, you know, God was speaking in my heart and this was the truth. And then as life went on, you can start, sort of look at yourself and be like, well, you know, maybe God doesn't love me anymore. And yet God knows all things from beginning to end. He knew my future be when he came to me that night, and I don't think he was surprised by anything I did 10 years down the road. Um, thank, thank God that, he's, that he does have that knowledge, and it's not like things take him by surprise. And, and then he was like, well, I didn't know you were going to do this 10 years down the road. I, I would not have given you the grace we, we talked about here. Uh, no, the grace of God extends as deep. Uh, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper than you could imagine. That's um, we're we're sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Thank um, God. And you know, hopefully, you know, this was a good topic. I was hoping to get more believers on here to share that um, that you know their freedom and their love for the Lord, what He's done. Well, you got one. You got <laughs> no. one believer in here, and I am grateful. <laughs> I am Truth Spell. I'm grateful to God and also grateful to you. I uh, hit my man. I feel the same way. I'm glad I came across you. I know, unfortunately, um, well, maybe I won't say it. But. 
Yeah, shall we discuss um, that? Shall we discuss whatever that you were on the verge of saying in private, perhaps? Or, uh, yeah, uh, I think I think we will probably um, wrap it up pretty soon here, and I'll say that thought afterwards. But hey, what uh, do you plan on publishing this uh, this particular segment? Or yeah, that... I think so. I think I'm gonna. I think I am gonna keep it up. You know, very yeah. good. Well, tell yeah. you what, then I would like to bow out at this point. But if, if, if I could, there's there's something very gracious and good that I wish to discuss with you in private. And so if oh, you okay. a couple of more minutes for me, when we do wrap up, I'd be most grateful. No, yeah, I think this is a good time, man. I think good. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so, yeah, if anyone's joining, I hope you got something out of this and maybe a deeper understanding of the grace of God, something that we all can definitely use. So. Bless Any last words, Tommy? <laughs> yes, bless any hearer, bless any listener, any hearer with more grace. Bless you and all you love and all who love you in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen.